Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about how we can make ethylene in terms of catalytic and thermal cracking, so how we can produce ethylene from different hydrocarbons. In this uh, video, we're actually going to cover why we need ethylene, why it's useful. And I'm going to go over the dot point. It says, identify that ethylene, because of its highly reactive, because of its high reactivity of its double bond, is readily transformed into many useful products. So with, with the actual ethylene structure, I mentioned last time, kind of have a gist of how it looks like, because it's going to come up, keep coming up over and over again. And it says, because of its highly reactive double bond, why it, it's useful because of its highly reactive double bond. So this part here was that double bond. And I'm going to cover why that's useful. So this is the same structure here, but in a Lewis dot structure. And if anyone has forgotten what the Lewis dot structure was, you guys might have covered this in year 11. But that was just to see um, only the electrons. So beforehand, with the first picture here, we saw the bindings, or where they bind. Whereas here, we just see the electrons. So same, they still bind, but we just see electrons, so the pairs of electrons. What we can see is we have a very dense area in the middle. We've got four electrons right here. So high density, like there's lots of electrons in that middle compared to anywhere else. I'm writing lots of electrons. Now, because there's lots of electrons, we actually have something interesting happening, which is that I wrote that ethylene loves binding with chlorine, oxygen, and bromine, but it's actually more the other way around. Chlorine, oxygen, and bromine love binding with ethylene. And the reason why is because if you look at here, uh, we just um, copied the relevant part of the periodic, the periodic table. And that was when we can look at the place where we can find chlorine here. This is bromine over there. And oxygen right here. So oxygen, chlorine, and bromine. And what they are is they're very electronegative. So that word, electronegative. And electronegative just meant they love electrons, right? They Because they want to have eight electrons in the outer shell. And in most cases, of in oxygen, chlorine, and bromine, they're only missing one electron to get to that noble gas stage. So they're really close. So they just want to grab one electron. but they want to, Or in the case of oxygen, they want to, oxygen one wants to grab two electrons. But chlorine and bromine want, want to grab one but they want to grab it really badly, so they love electrons. So you can imagine, even like, for example, if you have bromine, it, bromine is usually water, it's liquid. If you have bromine, even though they're connected, they still love that area, because even though they're connected and they're bonded and they should be happy, they still love electrons, so they're still attracted to this overall ethylene over here. I'm going to give a really bad kind of way of, of analogy, just because it's a bit of a... Um, inappropriate analogy, but I think it's a really easy way of to, to sort of visualize it. Um, so if you look over here, we've got the same bromide. This time it's against the Lewis dot structure. So we've got two bromide molecules. So it's the same as writing Br2. So that's bromide water. And um, at the moment they have eight electrons, so they should be happy. But they, they would actually be more happy if they were connected to these ethylene, so this highly reactive double bond over here. So the way you could sort of visualize it is these two are a married couple, but they're not really that into each other anymore. They're, they're kind of grown apart, I suppose. Um, and they would actually, they're more attracted to these other two, which are the two carbons. So even though they're a married couple, they kind of want to find a different partner and they found it in these two carbons. So again, I said it's a bit of an inappropriate analogy, but it's quite a good way to sort of visualize it. Um, so yeah, we've got these bromines who are, because of their electronegative nature, because they love electrons, they are gonna, they're gonna go to that area which is really dense electrons. And what actually happens is you can imagine this one bromine attached itself to, so it's now sharing its electrons with that carbon that same, the other bromine, which I drew in a different, slightly different color in terms of the brown color, the bit darker brown color, is attached to the other carbon. And even though it looks like they're attached here, they're not actually, it's not meant to be, they're not attached, they're separate. So they're not attached to each other anymore. Now they're attached to the carbons themselves. So now they're part of this ethylene structure. Um, so yeah, it was a basically an addition reaction. We added bromine to that double bond. A double bond is broken. We have no more double bond. You can see now it's just these two being connected. So that is the same as just having that that here. So 
just the carbons are connected, and we've got the bromines connected to this carbon. So this bromine is connected to this carbon, and that bromine is connected to that carbon. And they found new partners. And you can imagine the same thing with this. This is H2O, so um, two hydrogens, and that oxygen, H2O, so it's water. And if you have water and ethylene close by, what happens is it's again it's going to get rid of its one of its current partners. It's going to kick this hydrogen because it like like oxygen loves electrons. So what it's going to do is it's going to get this hydrogen and kick it off to the other carbon, so that carbon to the right, and it's actually going to bind to this carbon. So. This oxygen and this uh, hydrogen, those two will bind to left carbon, whereas the other hydrogen has kind of gotten kicked off because it didn't need to have more space to bind, and it's at the other carbon. Right? So if we look at <clears throat> what happened, we have that same thing here. So these two have bound together, and the other hydrogen which got kicked off is now at this carbon. And this is actually a alcohol, or it's actually it's an alcohol, but it's called ethanol. And you might have heard of ethanol. If you haven't heard of ethanol, you're going to hear about ethanol a lot in your chemistry HSC course, ethanol. But yeah, that's how we produce ethanol. If we have water close by, water kind of joins that eth ethylene structure and makes ethanol. And so I've got a few. So the, the actual dot point says, identify the ethylene because of its highly re high reactivity of its double bond is readily transformed into many useful products. So we just had like the, the actual things that we could, could um, form, but we haven't talked about the useful products. So ethanol, for example, was a very useful disinfectant. So you need to know um, what the actual product is, but what it's used for as well. So ethanol is a product which is a good disinfectant. Here you can imagine we have oxygen, just oxygen by itself, Doing the same thing, we have one of the oxygens bind to one of the carbon double bonds, breaking that double bond, and the other oxygen binds to the other one. And this is actually called ethylene oxide. Ethylene oxide is a good sterilizer. Uh, we also have two of ones which I won't talk about in this one because we, they're going to come up later. Is polyethylene, but this happens the same way. But polyethylene is a plastic, and ethanoic acid, and ethanoic acid is used for food preservatives. So all of these were examples of addition reactions. I'm going to put that word down as well because it's going to come up soon as well. Addition reactions. And what an addition reaction is, it's just a way that we can make new products or new, new substances by adding something to the double bond without actually losing anything else. So in this case, for example, here we had the bromines adding to the carbons. It was none lost. Nothing was lost, only things were added. Right, so if only things are added, it's called an addition reaction. So I'll go over top one again. Identified ethylene because of its high reactivity of its double bond, it's readily transformed into many useful products. So the actual double bond is really reactive because electronegative um, elements such as chlorine, oxygen, and bromine, they love attaching to it. And when they do, we can form different kind of products such as ethanol, which is a disinfectant, ethylene oxide, which is a sterilizer, polyethylene, which is a plastic, and ethanoic acid, which is used as food preservative. So know why that happens and know what kind of products we can produce using um, ethylene. So I hope that was useful.